Ooh, funky. All right. Um, so I'm going to do the, the risky thing and do a live demo there. Um, the, the concept of the talk is uh, how to abuse the stream field as much as you want, uh, given that uh, I'm not going to represent the same thing, but it's the uh, same as we've seen this morning. Um, you know, a lot of us, I think, are using uh, design systems that translate into blocks that go into stream fields and that allow to um, have a huge flexibility and that's an amazing feature of uh, Wagtail that really, you know, allows us to do anything we want. But the, the only drawback there is that um, if you are not careful with what you do or for whichever reason you, you need to adapt uh, different stuff and so on, you quickly end up with uh, many, many different blocks that reuse um, or like different kind of pages and so on. So for example, here is my uh, file full of blocks. You see this uh, thousands of lines long and there's uh, lots of uh, definitions of lots of kinds of blocks, et cetera, et cetera. And here, um, for example, I have um, like standard uh, button colors, okay, that, uh, that are in my UX. So suppose my designer says now I want uh, to have um, a blue button, okay. So I say blue here. So I just added one option, right? So I'm going to make a migration because otherwise Django is going to complain. So I'll make, like, two, 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 two. All right, no, not this. There we go. I'll make the migrations. Um, so you might be wondering why it's, it has not returned uh, yet. And I will ask uh, in between question to the audience, what do you think is going to be the size of the migration file? Um, so when I run it earlier, it took 40 seconds to generate. <laughs> so let's wait a little bit. I can do a dance in between. Um, but basically, since you know it's nested inside many pages, many stream fields, and so on, like all those fields individually have been affected, and you don't change just this property inside this field. You change the whole field because it's uh, the granularity of Django. So it does not go inside the field. So Let's see now what happened there. So you see that this thing has been um, you know, appearing and it's 5.1 megabytes. <laughs> um, so that's completely insane. And if you look at there, um, well, you see there's many lines, yes. <laughs> so, Pretty impractical in the end, and um, we initially we did not even realize this, but it's just uh, we were running the migrations on the Docker container that has like two gigabytes of RAM or I don't know three, and it was running out of memory, and we were like, what the fuck? You know, when you start the when you run Sava, it's uh, 400 megabytes of memory at start or whatever, but then it was exploding. So basically, just loading the migration literals into RAM was exploding the thing, and the migration folder was 500 megabytes. It was completely insane. So um, I had to do something about it um, that is, uh, well, don't call the exorcist, please. Um, that is basically I created, a, like, like, I created a little command here that uh, is a migration packing that is basically going through the migrations and looking for those huge literals um, that are very big and um, removes them from the file and transforms them into lazy loaded objects. So you'll see in a minute what I mean is that here all the stream fields got separated into different uh, little files that are um, containing the same thing, okay? Uh, but it's just uh, all condensed. There's no, um, you know, uh, indentation or anything. It's uh, just all the same. So, if you look at the the size of the thing, like um, we went from five megabytes to 280 kilobytes for the whole uh, migration, um, which is already a huge improvement. Like your Git is going to be happy about it. And on top of that, it's less things to load. But on top of that. It's also you don't have to load it if you don't need it because now what migration looks like is this. 
um, it is just having a lazy stream block here in the parameter of uh, the stream field. Um, and that's it. And I am giving here the name of, uh, of uh, the, um, the heavy literal. And I'm using, um, what's the name of the module? Proxy, uh, proxy lazy object. So basically, it's a Python module that um, makes a lazy object. So it, it, it will, it's indistinguishable from your real object. Uh, from any other part of the system, but it will just load the object when uh, uh, you access, try to access a property or do something with it. Um, and in that regard, it allows you to load all the migrations without loading the literals of all the stream fields and uh, without uh, overrunning the RAM. And so we went from uh, using uh, gigabytes of RAM to run the migrations to, to a lot less. And we also decreased a lot the size of the migrations uh, folder. So that's a um, little bit hacky, of course, uh, because there's, so unfortunately it's not open source because it's really disgusting what I did there, but uh, it works. <laughs> um, you can have a look, I'll show you. Must be somewhere. Tech. No, this one, well, back, and I better put it here. So basically what I do is that I have uh, this uh, whole script that is, uh, you'll see, running through the, like it's really hard coded, uh, not nicely, that is running through the AST of Python and that is just uh, dumping the AST into different files. And then I have this uh, static bit of uh, code that is uh, you know, generating the lazy stream block uh, based on the stuff and so it's lazy object proxy that I'm using. So yeah, basically that's it, but uh, I must say it has been very important for us to, to have this because at this scale of uh, dementia on uh, migration si sizes, we, we, <laughs> we needed something like this. I don't know if you have questions. Oh. Oh. <laughs>